The inability of the leather and garment sector to adopt new technology has caused major setbacks. The effect of these is felt in the non-oil exporting industry, as manufacturing capacity and product quality cannot compete effectively in the marketplace. Companies continue to face challenges in processing and production. The consequence for Nigeria is a reduction in entrepreneurial activity, economic diversification, and limited opportunities for commercial growth. This makes living and working conditions difficult in the leather and garment sectors. Basically, in this project, we are focused on two cluster areas, which is the garment and the leather cluster. Under the garment, we have uh, several value chains ranging from textiles to the producers of the finished products. Same also in the leather, where we also deal with artisans who are into finished leather goods. This includes the shoe, the bags, the belts, and uh, some other leather products. Leather work, we do have a lot of challenges. Assessing of the raw materials, assessing of the, the parts, like the buckle, the rivets, light issue. These have been a lot of challenges. San number we enough machines. Local machine making company the so, manual machine making company the so, bako me si ke yiga. Wana machine nung ko aiki kasamu, wanda za yeti maka anasan kamang bags, anasan two dozen, ko three dozen a one week. Bazaka ye making ba. Sabo the machine nung bashi the jury and the ze yu wana. Most of the challenges I, I encounter in this shoe manufacturing, if you look at it, we manufacture shoe through manual production which has been a very stressful thing. Like now, if I was able to uh, gather some apprentices, when they come to my shop and see that most of the production are manual, it is very hard. Some of them will go away. Okay, before the GISZ um, engagement, where we were being told to set up the cluster, there was nothing like cluster. Each of us just knew ourselves, maybe if we go for training, oh, I stay in FESTA, you stay in FESTA, but we didn't come together to um, look how we can promote our business, what we could do better. It's still we had that training that um, GIZ suggested that we should do, um, form ourselves into cluster. In terms of challenges, one of the things that the project also had to deal with was that there are broader macroeconomic challenges that affect light manufacturing sector as a whole, which is where these two value chains fall into. We all understand the death of infrastructure, we understand the death of power, and these are critical factors in light manufacturing sector. So these are challenges that the MSMEs who exist in this space have to deal with, and which NICOP has to contend with in designing all its interventions or uh, initiatives to engage with these actors. The European Union initiated the West African Competitiveness Program with a Nigerian component, NICOP co-funded by the German corporation BMZ in partnership with the Federal Ministry of Budget and Planning and the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. NICOP was implemented by the GIZ. NICOP aimed to improve the competitiveness of selected value chains by providing capacity building, entrepreneurship support, market linkages, access to innovation, access to finance and investment, and advocacy support to improve the business-enabling environments. NICOP provided support to actors across the leather and garment value chains, including aggregators, business member organizations, cooperatives, and associations. Our first focal point was understanding that we're working with clusters within Kano, Abia, and Lagos. And secondly, because of our approach, 
which is basically to ensure sustainability. Our work is driven through business membership organizations. And so we also had to narrow down on clusters where we could find active business membership organizations, which we found in Abia, we found in Kano, and we found in Lagos. The work in Kano State included support to the finished leather goods cluster, linked to skills-based programs through the Madafa and the Kalapma clusters. Kenga Munsamu access to market. Munsamu access to finance. Mere gema na challenges. Naga ya miki akwe capacity building. Summa na training ya maza mimi qualitative product. Hard design making. Sunko ya mana. Sana nanda karishie se suka chetu. Problem ni mwenda karishie. Shine wa nang finishing na. Mana ayin kaya finishing ba ya pata. Mere maga nung wa nang problem na. Se muka chie musu machines. Se suka chetu. Suka sama mana da machines. Machines manya wanda kwa. The Anuna mana iring ero dende yesa kaya mu baya competition dana iring kama global market. So yanzidu wa deke tiki wana abana nzuwa naiko tasa ya sang challenge din da yake facing din mu yasa kayan mu baya competition da na abun nan to abun da na sanye gaba da Nikon da na shigo cikin wannan kungiya gaskiya mun samu ci gaba saba dan a baya da muke zo na aka batsayin zama mu na kai tsaye mu kadai a karkashin wannan kungiya mun samu abubuwa da dama na tura mu harkar training yadda za mu kara inganta sana'ar mu da yadda za mu kara bunkasa ta da yadda za mu kara gyara ta ta fito ta zama ta zamani duk da dai cewa da hannu muke yi to amma an kara zamanin ta mana da abin ta hanyar halartar taron karawa juna sani da muke yi da ake wayar mana da kai gaskiya alhamdulillah mun amfana da shi sosai for the nigerian context finished leather goods clusters exist only in kano they exist in abia state which is aba and they exist in lagos in terms of uh, sheer economic skill Aba represents arguably the largest cluster of finished leather goods producers in Western Africa, not just Nigeria. In terms of economic scale, it also represents one of the largest uh, economically active uh, locations for medium small uh, enterprises within the country. The work in Abia State focused on work with business member organizations such as LEPMAS to improve service delivery and develop relationships with the brand owners and finished leather goods producers. What uh, I, in particular, will not say generally, I learned from SMA Lu. One, they imparted knowledge on me because I'm the one that went for the training. Uh, the relationship, recording, how to stock my raw materials they expose me into what we call organization like now this organization i can group it into two forms personal organization and the shop organization now look at me if i come to shop i will dress in a very nice outfit wearing my product when you come you feel the atmosphere around me first that will give you the impression to come to my shop in the first place to touch my goods now I have what we call goose organization. There is a way I will arrange my goose. I put it in a way that when customers come, the goose look like new arrival. These are one of, one of the things that the NICOP have helped me to improve in my business. We've been running this business primitively for decades of years. It is by GIZ intervention that we can, we can get some things out of us. What has been with me for decades of years that have not been profiting me anything, it is by their intervention that I know that, uh -uh. so my shop can pay me. The work on the garment value chain was mostly focused on Lagos, where a leading female association was earmarked for technical, access to finance, and access to market supports. You know, when you say NICOP, you see the way I smile. <laughs> because for me, NICOP have opened ways, opened doors for me. NICOP have opened my eyes to see fashion in a different ways. 
in terms of training, in terms of accountability, in terms of networking, and how to penetrate markets. To be honest, with the training I've gotten from NICOP through AVDEC, I can stand anywhere. I can challenge any fashion designer anywhere. And I believe I can penetrate any market here in Nigeria and Africa. Apart from the training, NICOP supported, um, created an opportunity for access to markets, like we've been able to go for exhibitions um, to support our business. And then um, we've had a lot of network opportunities where we meet, like, who is who is in fashion industry because you can't just be operating alone. You also need um, some people, yes, like mentorship. We've had a lot of people to mentor us courtesy of NICOPS. Uh, I want to compare before NICOPS and after NICOPS. It's just like comparing a healthy person and person in the hospital. Before NICOPS, I'm in the hospital. After NICOPS, I'm a very healthy person. I started this business with one sewing machine. But after NICOPS intervention and training, I can stand and boast that I have 10 industrial sewing machines, 8 manual sewing machines, 2 industrial stoning machines, 3 weaving sewing machines. Not to talk about the, the other things, equipment. The difference between before and after is too wide. You can't you can even compare them. Then in terms of customer satisfaction, before I would say 20 over 100, but now I can say 90 over 100 because we are heading to that 100. If NICOP had not happened, I would say on a scale of 1 to 5, my business would have been on 2. But with NICOP's happening, my, on the scale of 1 to 5, the business is now on five, and five being the very good. Excellent. Clusters were trained in quality improvement and product development. Access to market support included e-commerce and online market readiness with leading e-commerce platforms for online distribution. Uh, at some point, NICOP uh, had a collaboration or a sort of uh, engage in a partnership with uh, Jumia. Jumia happens to be one of uh, the uh, largest uh, online store in Africa. So we had an engagement with them. We, we identified and uh, engaged some uh, product aggregators who were uh, uh, sent to Lagos and uh, they had an intensive uh, three days training where they were onboarded. Uh, during the course of the training, they were able to activate what we call their seller profiles, that they are individual stores online. So all of this was uh, aimed at promoting e-commerce for the artisans. Even currently now, this Jimmy has something now, they are introduced us to Jimmy, so that online sales. So that this issue was not like that before. But through the help of this NACOM, all these programs I'm mentioning now, they introduce, us, they introduce it to us. It's NICOP. NICOP is the mother to Jumia to me. Because without NICOP, I wouldn't know Jumia. So it's after the training, when I receive a call from them that I'm one of the participants that is going to Lagos for training under Jumia. So I'm one of the aggregators. I must be sincere, it's not what I expected. But I'm also enjoying it too, because of the facilities. It has made me to meet upper and some people have been calling me like when my shop was on. People that got my contacts there, they are calling me booking shoes through Jumia. So now come to our area, bring us some money in the Zamu. Tell the Hajarum, the Harker, Yadar Gizu, my Anna, come on Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, the Facebook, the Makam and Tansu. Muna ni kama yanzu ni ina iye tala taka ya nato wa ena kapa hapa nsada ruwa. Saba na ngada ba na iye yi. Siede na yisu wa enda sika sani ni yeka wa sika sani na wa nansa na ar. Idang akati ana anima animoni. Kuma alhamdulillahi muna sama ngaruwa tshiga. Wada kukwana na 
na samu harka ta hanyar wannan yanar gizo ta whatsapp da nayi aiki na dora shi a status abokan zama na suka gani wurin sana'ar mu aka gani ana so so alhamdulillah a yanzu haka nayi aikin na samu riba kusa naira 250 if i'm talking of a particular look somehow a lot of support they helped me they opened my eyes to know how i can make sex online without going anywhere that really helped me even during time of covid COVID-19 was by far the biggest challenge encountered during the implementation of the project. During and after the COVID-19 lockdown, NICOP developed and implemented a number of short, medium and long-term responses by providing support to AFDEC, a gender-based group that supports over 2,000 female-owned MSMEs in Nigeria. COVID-19 was indeed something that took everybody by surprise and the team in NICOP was also unpleasantly surprised by the events that were unfolding. But uh, instead of us just taking a step back, what all the teams actually did was to actually have even more conversations with the different partners that we were supporting. We were also able to support a different garment clusters to start producing face masks that were actually distributed in marginalized areas in, the, in Lagos and other big cities. NICOP supported AFDEC to produce about 10,000 nose masks and I was part of the beneficiaries. And um, I must say that at that time of uh, the pandemic where our businesses was um, really, really um, bad, it was really so helpful for us to pick up back, um, to recoup our um, loss during the pandemic. The focus here was placed on finished leather goods and finished garments. A key intervention was the entrepreneurial training and coaching for MSMEs and clusters in these sectors. NICOP sought to improve the quality, knowledge and ability to manufacture finished leather goods and garments with emphasis on rapid customization, production at scale as well as assurance of homogeneous quality. So for me, uh, the impact is enormous in terms of job creation, in terms of income generation, in terms of improvement in livelihood, in terms of uh, even the business growth and expansion, and even in terms of, um, of course, the productivity, in, uh, that is the quality and the quantity of the product that are being produced today. Where we met them, they couldn't sell their goods even within and compete within uh, sub-regional uh, sub, uh, West African uh, countries. But today they are even able to export to uh, Europe, to US, and they are now competing favorably with um, other brand names across the world. So for me, this is a huge impact that comes with multiplier effect. Well, NICOP have achieved that end, whereby, like now, when I come across NICOP, there are some contract work which I was not able to assess. Like, let me say, this safety boot, as in police shoe, school shoes, through this program. Like, for instance, there is one school from Northern Side that called me. I say they had, they see my product, this and that. They would like me to produce school shoes for them, which I believe that this is the benefit that I've gotten from Nike. And to the NICOP uh, intervention, it opened ways to me to meet international customers. Now I can sit down here, do business with people, my customers in Australia, in America, in UK, in South America. Do you understand? All this is courtesy of NICOP. We tell them, I, I will not know the way to do all these things. They help me a lot in that aspect. Of a truth, by the GIZ intervention, the NICOP contributions to our industry, mostly to LEPMAS, have even made me not to leave my business again. What I am holding at my hand now is pure leather, international standard. This is leather. 
we compete with the Italy by the intervention of GIZ. Kuma product in the Mickey and Zoo, Bab said the product on Bazi Shigaba. Product in the Mickey and Zoo, Idan Akatai Shiza Akashi Wanikasa, Zami packaging ish, Za Atura Shin Wanikasa, Imba and Duba brand name, O Logoba, Bazaka Ghana and Nigeria. And this an idea Zoo and Nikop Nina, the errant train in the Akasa Sam, Secretary Nakunjer Kalama. Yanziata to say the pire. What a cassa to Africa neighbors country. What the Kusan Kayan theatre for the Sioux. The hanging training in the Akasamu. Na Nazon, JZ Nakop, no. She needs a Haria Sang Maga, a disease selection, and Kayan the Ekamati to put in your day to the Zay Gogaya Nida Kaga Kamar Global and Makataka. Quantitative data reflects the success of NICOP's interventions in the leather and garment value chains, such as the training of 1,908 people, with about 2,000 instances of trainings delivered. 52% of beneficiaries were informed of access to finance options. Over 600 beneficiaries accessing loans. About 44 million Naira disbursed in loans. 12 market linkages were facilitated. 79% of beneficiaries' income increased. NICOP's main focus has always been on the empowerment of MSMEs and artisans so that they can continue to build robust business models that are bankable and scalable. <laughs> Then Ganada Abanda, European Union, Sakaimana, the Hat and We Won BMZ, the Kuma GIZ. So, what a do one number and then I said a little silly. To buy a bend design, you must see a good year. See a doa. Gastia, one name in our Magana and the Hatchkins with theatre. On behalf of entire women, Nakano State. And then the another thing I want to ask, and I keep on begging, I really want to partake in fashion exhibition in January. I want that, is, that has been my dream. I, will, I want to be part of those people coming from Nigeria to take part in fashion fair in January. While we were thanking God on their behalf, we are still thanking EU. Thanking BMZ for their contribution, for their efforts to make sure that humanity is well represented.